r slash ask reddit what is the most ducking useless thing that they teach in school our elementary school was heavy into unicycles gym class year round was learning to ride then ride together and in formation i was one of the unlucky few who never got it i can't dance or ride a bike either so i suspect there's some balance issues school all but threatened to hold me back a year until i learned how everyone forgot and never picked it up again as soon as they moved to middle school worst part is that we were a very poor school in a very rural area without much funding i can't imagine how much the school spent on those unicycles there was no sponsorship and we weren't competing in anything edit this was in a public school in western washington state in the late 80s but i think some other schools nearby did this too nearby high school is mt chs aka the actual twin peaks hs not even remotely kidding the idea of some small village where everyone rides around on unicycles and has no idea it's not normal feels like something out of a quirky rpg or mayo sorry you had to go through that it must have been so kafkaesque would make sense in an isolated village if there's no outside influence then from one generation of teachers to the next they'll misguidedly keep forcing each and every student to ride a one-wheeler it's a dangerous cycle that if someone's bullying you you tell them that you don't like it like no shit that's why they do it edit holy moly thanks for all the awards i just started this account and this is the first comment that's blown up on my whole time in reddit i was waiting in the office for a counselor's appointment in 9th grade and this kid that i didn't know decided to lay into me and make fun of absolutely everything about me i wasn't making eye contact I just kept shaking my head no and looking at all the office workers, who heard him, but ignored it and said nothing. As soon as I got into my counselor's office, I started sobbing. This kid had absolutely broken me. The counselor was visibly uncomfortable with me crying, and was like do you want to talk to him? Let's get him in here and talk it out. I was like no, why would I want him to know what he did to me? To which the counselor replied so you two can be buds after this. I was like yay, let's let the bully know that his tactics have worked, and I'm even closer to killing myself now than ever, which is why I was going to the counselor's office in the first place, duck, that, shit, glad I never have to do high school again because I wouldn't make it out alive a second time, edit, hello all you beautiful people, there's a couple things that I'd like to address here, first off, I am a 32 year old woman, and I was 14 at the time, the guy that was making fun of me was at least 17, and easily 50 pounds heavier than me. I had zero chance. So while many people are saying well I would have ziz, no, you wouldn't have. You'd have the same reaction as I did, no matter how brave you thought you would have been, or I should have been, at the time. To those of you who have gone through something similar, goddamn, the ducking sucks, and I'm sorry you all went through it as well. It saddens me to know how common this experience is for so many, but I am happy that we have all lived through it. And to that one particular redditor who told me next time pinch your sack, maybe then you won't be such a kitten. You my dude, are so far off the mark, you are just precious. I seriously don't get that. How can school staff legitimately think hey this kid's getting bullied? They would certainly make good friends. This plan couldn't duck up in any way. You get people in this thread saying teaching algebra or proofs is useless and simultaneously demanding that schools should teach critical thinking. People, I don't need to learn science in school. I'm not a scientist. Also people, I read on the insta fasa pages that vaccines cause super aids. My doctor said otherwise. But what does he know? I'm a mother. Holy duck am I sick and tired of all these mothers using their motherhood to tell me how smart and qualified they are. I'm a nurse and a mother. I'm 100% qualified to give expert opinions on why I'm skeptical of the covered vaccine. First of all, being a mother is literally no better than me being a father. Second of all being a nurse is not even in the same ballpark as being an infectious disease doctor. So get off your ducking horse. In phys ed they had us take actual written tests a few times sitting on the gym floor. Questions like where was basketball invented? What are the rules of pickle? Yada yada. Other useless shit. I took an intro to bowling class in college as an elective and we had to have an actual final written exam with questions like where was bowling invented. I took bowling in college and it was nothing more than going down to the local lanes a couple's times a week to throw some balls. 
drink some beers, and smoke a whole lot of cigarettes, as you may have deduced. This was more than a few years ago. Square dancing. It was put into the curriculum at US schools after heavy lobbying from industrialist Henry Ford. He didn't like the awful, new modern dances people were doing. Like the Charleston. I remember when they said we were doing square dancing for a semester. Everyone groaned and beached and said how stupid it was. At first, then by the end of the semester a lot of people were having to hide their enjoyment of it. Plus a lot of those kids won't otherwise get a chance to interact with the opposite sex. Plus a lot of those kids won't otherwise get a chance to interact with the opposite sex. We were told that was why we were subjected to it in 8th grade. They were trying to force interaction between the sexes at a critical point of development. It didn't work, but they tried. Zero tolerance policy is the dumbest thing ever taught and implemented. All it teaches is to fear authority when you're the victim. It enables the perpetrator, who is normally a bully. I know administrators are lady ducks, but they need to actually investigate the goddamn problem instead of saying, hey you both were involved in the issue so you're both going to get punished. It basically just raises you to hate authority. And while I don't like authorities either I don't think they're all distrustful. Although, I guess this could be interpreted as commentary on how garbage authority is. It also escalates situations. You're getting the same punishment if you retaliate or not. So you better make sure they think twice before starting shit with you again. I do not want to say this and strongly advocate against violence. But this unfortunately led to such conclusion. Indeed. To ask to go to the bathroom. I don't know. Can you? Every time a teacher said that to me. I was so tempted to say let's find out and just piss everywhere. But I knew it wouldn't end well. That sticking up for yourself is wrong. I punched a kid in the face because he was being physically abusive to me. He grabbed my arms and spun us in circles. Intending to let go once I would be sort of thrown through the air. I got an arm loose and punched him in the face before that happened. Instead of him being expelled I, a female half his size, was forced to apologize for defending myself. I'm still ducking mad. That reminds me of the time when I was being bullied by some older guys in 3rd grade and I was just a small girl. Open bracket. Edit. I use he him now btw. They threw a basketball at my head once and so, having enough, I slapped one of them. Teacher claimed to not see the boys throwing 3 basketballs at my head and I got detention for the rest of the week. Got tripped by some bullies in school and literally had my skull crack open on a steel and concrete pillar. It messed me up for life. They never got in trouble. Not exactly something they teach in general, but in my high school music class. We had to memorize our national anthem in a different language. We used to be a colony and it was originally written in the colonizer's language. And then sing it out loud with the same melody and all. Except you're parroting a bunch of words that you don't understand. Over a decade later and I still think it was a pointless exercise. What country are you from? Probably from the Philippines. I had that to learn our national anthem in Spanish and in English too in high school. Memorizing the periodic table. It's a table. There is no need to memorize it. All the info is there already. Every single day in chemistry class, there was a huge poster on the wall with the periodic table on it. Big enough to read from any seat in the room. Except one day. The one day we had to take a test on how well we'd memorized it. Then they covered it with a sheet. You see, it was absolutely essential we remember the molecular number of molybdenum. For all those hypothetical other times when we wouldn't just be able to look up on the wall and see it. But yes why did we have to memorize the molecular numbers? Especially in an age where most everyone has a smartphone they can use if they really need to know the molecular value of something. There's learning to educate. And then there's memorizing for an exam. Completely different concepts. That if we cover our shoulders and legs boys will stop looking at us. Saudi Arabia must be just full of men who are hyper focused on the task at hand and not looking up weird porn. Wait. They could save a lot of resources by making men wear blindfolds when in mixed company rather than having women draped crown to toe edit if misogynist wankers could stop PMI me abusive messages that'd be great. We get it. No one will touch your pee. Wonder why. I don't know. But if they don't start teaching people how to spot fake news soon. 
we're all gonna be living under dictatorships. Edit. Wow. My first reddit gold. Thanks. Kind stranger. Thanks for the others. 2. All of us learned to do research papers in school. But how many of us made the jump to doing any kind of basic research in the real world? Isn't that Marizo the fault of the individual? If you're given the skills to do research and you don't use them I'm not sure how schools could change that. Square dancing. I begged my parents to let me call in sick on square dancing days. What a ridiculous and uncomfortable activity. Why in hell was it part of the pay curriculum? LOL. We had written finals in high school for P.E. It was so ridiculous that even the P.E. Teachers didn't really bother reading our answers while grading the exams. Example questions. A friend of mine answered described the history of the football with an elaborate answer about how a guy stuck on an island kicked a coconut and due to a quantum anomaly, his foot fused with the coconut. This led to the birth of the legend of the football. Another friend answered what is an aerobic exercise with a drawing of a man doing push-ups in the presence of a chemistry set creating oxygen via hydrogen peroxide. And drew arrows to them labeling the reaction and the push-ups as aerobic and exercise respectively. Another friend answered a question about things to keep in mind when trying to eat a balanced diet for health with points like try not to eat a brick wall. Only one of them failed. One of them had their final exam sheet framed. Edit. Holy shit. This blew up. Just to be clear. I'm not saying knowing those things isn't important. Just that we had covered all of that in middle school as different subjects. Except for the history of sports questions. So it was just something nobody cared about. Thanks for the awards. Strangers. Edit 2. Clarified high school. I want to hope that it was the aerobic exercise that had failed. It'd be funny for the other two to pass even though the aerobic exercise was probably the closest answer to being correct. It actually was him that failed. Hard to get away with a diagram. The others just passed because nobody bothered to read the answers. I'm from Texas. And in Texas history class we learned way too much about the Battle of the Alamo. Do you remember the Alamo? Apparently he does. Indeed. How to take care of a baby by bringing in an egg having the teacher sign the egg decorating, protecting, and carrying the egg at all times for two days revealing to the teacher at the end of day two that the egg was still intact, without cracks. All that taught me was how to take care of an egg. Step 1. Put it in the fridge. Sure but what about the egg? That the female body will shut down during rape and she won't get pregnant. Thus babies cannot be conceived during rape. Catholic Grammar School. Northern Ireland. Ducking useless. Factually and ethically wrong. OMG. I thought this was just some ridiculous drivel a whole politician spout. Makes me wonder if he learned it too. As a matter of fact, the female body actually does have ways of shutting that down, if you're duck. There are likely a wide variety of answers you'd get from this question, but education isn't necessarily meant to provide just a means to an end, i.e. something useful. Education is about broadening our view of the world, teaching us what all is out there, and showing us there is so much more than what we see inside these four walls. Teaching us about what astronauts do on the ISS isn't very useful information for many of us, but it's incredibly interesting, and it shows us that there is amazing value in exploration, discovery and further learning. Earth is an ever-changing and beautiful planet, and its inhabitants are even more fascinating and entertaining. We'd likely never know any of this if we didn't study and learn about everything that's here. Yes, some of it is kinda boring, and maybe useless. But it all adds to the depth and breadth of our ability to think critically, and more objectively, about all things. Edit. Wow. Thanks for all the colorful emoji thingies. I've never gotten any of these before. Most of the BSI pedal on Reddit just crashes and burns at the bottom of the thread about 10 seconds after I hit save. That was my initial thought as well and I was ready to come into this thread and be outraged by the responses. Then I read Unicycle. And. Yeah, that's fair. Same here. I came expecting people decrying the benefits of advanced mathematics and English literature. Instead I got unicycling and theory of physical education. My old high school decided that P.E. wasn't important and instead of having two periods where we would be exercising and learning about the human body they made us take spiritual development. I hated my old high school. 
Edit. I see a lot of meditation comments. No. We didn't learn to meditate. That class was about reading bible stories to help us become more religious. It was ducking bullshit. Yes it was a private christian school. Edit 2. To clarify. P. E was compulsory until grade 11. That's when that spiritual development bullshit came in on P. E became an elective subject. My friends who took it said they learned about human movement. Muscles of the body and how to prevent injuries. I ducking loved playing sports but another class that was more important clashed with P. E so I couldn't take it. Sounds like they took the high part very seriously. TF do you learn in that class? How to unlock your chakras? D. A. R. E. Was the single worst ducking useless thing every taught at school. Especially when the cop teaching said class ends up getting arrested for coke. Studies show dare increases drug use because 1. When they realize dare is lying about weed, they assume dare is lying about other drugs and 2. So much emphasis on resisting peer pressure makes kids assume everyone is doing drugs, so they have to do them to fit in. The dare rhetoric got to the whole world through cartoons and I thought that people would be offering me free drugs all the time. I'm 32 and I've only smoked a joint once, recently, shared by a friend that's a teacher. My heart goes out to you slash poem for your sprog with the number of people saying poetry in this thread. I am the wind beneath the trees, the whispers in your ear, the warm and gentle summer's breeze, the voice you long to hear. I am the blue beyond the sky, the shadow shade of night, the softest sparkle in your eye, the morning glare of light. I am the rhymes that ride the tide, the swing, the sound, the beat, the lines that swell and slip and slide, in stanzas. Small and sweet, I am the secret silver seams, that weave inside your mind. I am the lost and tender dreams, you dared to leave behind. I am the coin you cannot earn, the knot you can't untwist, the thing in class you couldn't learn, and so in time dismissed. I am the storm, I am the sea, the unison, the split, I am the you, I am the me, and also full of shit. Abstinence only sex ed. Imagine if driver's ed just to told you the only way to avoid an accident is to never drive a car. Both equally useless because uh, you can get raped while practicing abstinence. And you can still get hit by a car even if you never drive one. Not a lesson but they teach you to respect adults no matter what. That's how teachers get away with so much nonsense. It's how parents get away with abuse. Kids are taught to respect adults but what they really teach them is don't do anything to inconvenience an adult. So a kid is more likely to keep their mouth shut if they're getting molested or beat. They need to teach instead that respect is earned and not to blindly trust people just because they have seniority or authority over you. That you have a right to make a judgment on somebody if they are doing something bad. 100% agree. This shit is what makes children think it's their fault when someone is treating them wrong and it is so incredibly harmful. When I was in primary school we got taught about digital roots. It's where you take a number, add up all the digits and repeat if you have more than one digit. So 684 equals 6 plus 8 plus 4 equals 18 equals 1 plus 8 equals 9. Nobody else has ever heard of this. It's useful for a rather niche video game lol. What game? Ignoring the bully. He she will go away. Sticks and stones will break my bones but names will never hurt me that needs to chance. I'm sorry but if someone is bullying my child on a day to day basis, my son has every right to take charge. Left brain versus right brain. Not only is it not true, it just divided all the kids from smart kids to art kids. No need for that. Character counts it was our school's motto. The school also actively punished honesty and integrity when it mattered, and instead held award ceremonies for students who showed basic human decency like hey you drop this in the hallway, here you go, you will get awards for not being a piece of shit. But if you decide to show any real character like stepping up for your friends when they're in trouble, you get detention. Let it be known, Arendelle Secondary School in Ontario, Canada is a shit hole. Character is what you do when nobody is looking is what our coach used to say. Funny, because I don't remember any kids called character. But he apparently was doing someone's kid regularly. Off to jail he went, along with his character. In his mind, character almost always meant running through the halls when nobody was looking. Which what flol how is that even an issue? But ducking children. Well, 
That's just fine. Not to chew gum. On a more serious note. That hugging and public displays of affection are bad. Ask me how many times I got detention because of this. Chewing gum is probably not an educational rule. But rather a custodial rule. Those guys don't get paid enough to scape off your nasty chewed up gum. As a teacher. The number of times I put my fingers in someone's old. Chewed gum just because I tried to move a table or chair was far too high. I don't think what schools teach is useless. They just tend to kind of hide the real point. Which is learning how to learn and how to think. The focus shouldn't be history. The focus should be how do you learn history? What they need to do is stop being outdated. Stop making kids write in cursive if you know the world moves toward typing. Stop making kids do math in a particular way when there are usually many ways to solve a problem. Adapt. Vet your teachers to root out political nuts and glorified babysitters. Are so much to do but it's gotta be made a priority and it just isn't. Most teachers I know are all for this. But parents and other community members show up to education board meetings and scream and cry when we ask to weed out antiquated curriculum in order to make room for more useful and current skills. What needs to happen is let teaching decisions be made by teachers. Too many decisions are being made by and for people who have no idea about education. As far as vetting teachers, that differs district to district. But until we pay teachers better and treat them like professionals, we are going to struggle to find and retain quality talent. I agree with you that none of this is a priority. It's very sad. In middle school we had a rule that you couldn't stop at your locker in between classes. Their logic was that you should be prepared with all of your books and stuff for the rest of the day. But my locker was 5 feet from most of my classrooms. I argued that it shouldn't matter as long as you're on time and prepared. My youth left me with a deep disregard for authority that continues to this day lol. Pledge of Allegiance was another goofy thing. Seemed like early indoctrination into the cult of US nationalism. But they acted like it was just normal stuff. Needless to say we quickly found out that you can just sit and stay quiet and they couldn't do anything about it lol. You should be prepared with all of your books and stuff for the rest of the day ugh we had this too and my tiny ass struggled to carry all my shit because we also weren't allowed to bring book bags into the classrooms. And for what? As a non-American, I find your pledge of allegiance, and the fact that children are semi forced to recite it, all kinds of creepy. Usually you only see that sort of shit in fascist regimes and authoritarian dictatorships. It's less useless and more actively harmful, but the way drugs education was taught when I was growing up was straight up nonsense. All drugs are bad. Okay, alcohol is also a drug, and it can definitely kill you. But it's also fine for some reason. Don't question it, and weed is just as bad as heroin. All you need to know is that anyone who even looks at a joint is a morally repugnant junkie and they are destined to have more children than teeth on some council estate, or will rob old ladies to fund their deplorable habit, and that's if you don't straight up die from even being in the same room as weed smoke. The police definitely have your best interests at heart when they arrest you, so you should knock on anyone you know who might be doing drugs, because jail is the better alternative and it's always for your own good. Oh. And don't worry about what happens when you actually try drugs. Because even though you might find a glass of wine or an edible is actually pretty great. You're almost certainly going to start to wonder if maybe heroin and meth aren't that bad either. Are they? Can you trust your teachers? WHO duck in nose? Also I was led to believe that way more people would offer me drugs that I could just say no to than ever have in my life. Drugs are expensive. Y'all. In my country we do religion. And don't you dare argue with a teacher or ask any questions cause Jesus is the only answer. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cut you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.